Hey guys, I'm Justin with Legato Financial Group. Our firm is passionate about helping educate consumers, which is why we're powering the Gaining Interest Podcast. The podcast of quick conversations with industry experts on topics that you want to know about, from sports to dining to healthcare and automotive, and really everything in between. It's hosted by one of the greatest local personalities that I've met, and that's John Ramsey. I'll tell you why I love this podcast, because it's all about community. We used to call it water cooler talk, and that no longer exists. But if it's interesting to you, it's interesting to us. We encourage you to tell your friends. As Justin mentioned, we're going to talk about everything under the sun. We will be gaining interest, and we appreciate you watching. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Gaining Interest, a podcast about everything that happens to be interesting, brought to you by Legato Financial Group. Okay, so what's your favorite Disney movie? Okay, I promise you, this is going to be a version of Beauty and the Beast, because with me right now is Sophia Todd, and she is Miss Kentucky's teen, and she sure looks the part. Sophia, first of all, congratulations. You've been Miss Kentucky's teen since June, right? Yes, sir, I have been. It's been amazing. It's been opportunity of a lifetime, for sure. Wow, I, I am so curious because there's so many stereotypes and misconceptions about being, for lack of a better term, a beauty queen, yeah. but you are one, so we're going to clarify everything, right? Yes, we will. Okay, so first of all, obviously, you know, uh, good genetics doesn't hurt, but with that being said, it's so much more. So first of all, tell me about your initial interest in becoming Miss Kentucky's teen. Well, my mom had always done pageants whenever she was a little girl, and it really changed her life for her in a lot of ways. She was an emancipated minor when she was 16, so it really helped her get into the community and build a reputation, and she now owns three of her own businesses. And I mean, that's something I aspire to do alongside with her. But initially, that was my interest in doing pageants was just through my mom kind of living out her legacy. But once I really got into it and started realizing the truth behind all of it, it helped me discover who I am. There's a lot about a pageant girl that people don't know. And before you ever compete or really get into it, you have to learn to get down and dirty with yourself and figure out the true things about you, what you like about you, what you're passionate about, what you want to advocate for, and things about yourself that you maybe don't want to represent. And for me, it was always art that I was super passionate about. And pageants gave me an advocate to give that to the community in a way that I never would have thought of on my own. I love your passion. This is, this is going to yeah. be fun. So, okay, now, and I don't mean to put a wet towel on everything, but I want to go to a stereotype or a misconception. I want you to clarify. A lot of times we hear about beauty pageant mothers. Yeah. and that they're you know very doting and controlling of their daughter and it, that it's really living vicariously through their daughter so I can already tell you love your mother it's not that way is it no not at all I mean of course there probably are those pageant moms I guess I've I can say I've seen it firsthand, but my mom, it's definitely not like that with us. She's actually my makeup, uh, hair, makeup and hair artist, so I get to do a lot of this through her. I don't really use pageant coaching until this year. After I won Miss Kentucky, the organization itself brought a lot of the coaches to me themselves and started paying for it, so I really got to pick up on that this year, but a lot of it I've done just me and my mom together, so if anything, it's brought our relationship a lot closer, and it's something special we can share with each other. So, so, so you not only got the good looks from your folks, you got the poise, the intellect, <laughs> the whole nine yards. I definitely Yeah, did. I met your dad, very, very sharp guy, very proud of you, as he should be. So, all right, let's clear up some more misconceptions, okay? So, being a beauty queen, I think sometimes think, okay, you just go up there, you model, you do a little runway work, and but there's a lot of preliminary work there that is. goes into being in a pageant and particularly winning. Yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about what, what is the prep like? What did you have to know going into a pageant? Well, there is a 10-minute interview, first of all, for Miss Kentucky specifically. Um, I will be in Miss America's Teen in January, and that's going to be a six-minute interview. But there's interviews can come at you with anything. They can ask you from what's your favorite color, what's your favorite movie, to politics, what side do you stand on, do you think people will colonize on other planets, that is something I've been asked in the interview before. So preparation comes from just being prepared to answer anything, and it's not always people think they have to have the right answer, it has to sound like what the judges want to hear, but it's more so being able to answer it in a graceful way. Because you're always going to be allowed to have your opinion, and that's something I've always said in my interviews, that I'm a firm believer on agreeing to disagree. You know, I have my own opinions the same way you're allowed to have your own opinions, but I should never put you down or make you feel wrong for your opinion. 
just do it in a graceful way, represent your opinion in a graceful way. Yeah. So a lot of preparation comes from just being prepared to answer anything. Yeah, and because you're representing the state of Kentucky, it's important that you show your poise and your ability to to articulate your message. So is this something that you've been born with? Obviously you're good at it. So is, it, is this something that has evolved as you've gotten older? It's definitely evolved as I've gotten older. It's actually part of my whole platform that I've created. Um, I'm very passionate about art and something I was passionate about, this is something I created before it was ever my pageant platform or now called my CSI Community Service Initiative. So it's what I do most of my community service through. It's a project I created myself called Art Spoken, where I help nonverbal, trauma-inflicted, or communication barrier children, helping them communicate through art expression. So that's something I really struggled with when I was little, although I wasn't nonverbal and I didn't have communication barriers, I really had a struggle communicating my feelings and emotions all the time. And I quickly learned that art was an outlet for me. I grew up in a house that strongly supported artistic freedom, so it's gratefully something that I got to grow up learning since I was about like six years old honestly and once I got into pageantry it made me realize that I can use this project across Kentucky and I've now implemented it in groups all across Kentucky and I'm actually currently an art teacher at one of my favorite charities called Hope Academy for Kids. It's a nonprofit organization for the at-risk youth in the community of Hardin County and I'm an art teacher there now where I get to do that every month. Wow, so you're following your, your passion in another direction as well. Not yes. Only being Miss Kentucky's teen, but, right. but also uh, occupationally, yeah. cool. Okay, I, I'm sorry, but I cannot, I'm, I'm confused with how you do that at a pageant. Like, you know, I, you, you know when someone sings or when someone juggles, right. or whatever they happen to do, they can do it in front of an audience. So how do you display that I'm really good at, do you draw, do you paint, what do you do? Yes, I'm actually a speed painter. So I do paint on stage. I paint upside down in 90 seconds. So I'm actually... Wait a minute, upside down. You're not physically upside no, down. No, 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 no. I have a spinning easel. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's something we've done a lot of research in. My first preliminary pageant I won was Miss Heart of Bourbon Country, which was Bardstown. And I did this like tiny little canvas that I just held and flipped over and stuff. But now for nationals, I have this huge spinning easel. The canvas is bigger than me. It spins on its own. It's really cool. And you know, when you do something like speed painting, painting on stage, and then you watch all these girls singing and dancing and they're moving and getting active, painting can be watching paint dry. So it's really <laughs> important to keep it fun and upbeat and get people really interested and want to think about what you're painting. And that's why I love doing it upside down because it's a, it's a guessing game the entire time. Like, what what is that? And then you spin it at the end and it's like, that's, but I would think also it stands it out, right? I mean, it definitely yeah, does. There's no one, not, not many do that. You there's may be no the only. other speed painters in the team, yes. There's one in the Miss, and it's Miss Michigan, and then me and Miss Team. So when you say speed painting, I think I've seen this at like concerts. Sometimes they want to have a visual experience as well as that person singing on stage. So someone will be painting kind of to lend or complement what the lyrics are about. Yes. So is that similar to what you do? Oh, well, yes, definitely is. The first time I ever speed painted was for a school talent show where one of the counselors was singing Rise Up and I painted a little peace dub with a rainbow behind it. And then for the state competition, Miss Kentucky, I painted The Greatest Showman and I had the opening song, The Greatest Showman playing in the background and it's super upbeat and fun. And for nationals, I've got a really cool idea up my sleeve and we've actually made our own soundtrack to go along with the painting that I'm going to be doing. We can't reveal. <laughs> All right, we can't. No, no, no. Yeah, let's keep it on the on the down low. We want to we want to have those judges Surprise. just jaw dropping. Okay. As the father of two sons, uh, I have, I'm a big believer in in the team experience, you know. Yes. Team sports. What is it like when it comes to pageants, yes, it's on you as an individual, but there is some kind of a sorority there of women who are, okay, we all want to win, yeah. but we support each other. Is that true, or is there a cattiness that's involved? It's definitely true. It's definitely true. A lot of people think that the girls are catty backstage or we're fake. You know, we not are what we present. But in reality, when you're backstage with girls for a week straight, talking about interview, prepping, helping each other change in two minutes, like you guys really become best friends and it's almost inevitable to like skip past. You kind of just have to become friends. And 
it's truly a relationship that lasts for a li lifetime. Like, I'm a pretty introverted girl at heart, honestly, so going into Miss Kentucky for the first time, I was super, super nervous because I've never been part of a team or really had a big group of girlfriends. So it was a little frightening, wondering, am I going to fit in here? Am I enough to fit in with these girls? But once you get there and you start competing, they, it's, they absolutely bring you in like family. It's something I never expected, and I encourage everyone to try it. Because the thing about this system, about Miss Kentucky and the Miss America system, you don't have to be what people would say it's a pageant patty. You don't have to be doing pageants for years and years. You don't have to have the experience of a lifetime to do it. It's really about going, meeting girls, and representing what you're passionate about. You articulate that very well. Oh, so you. staying on the theme of, of team sports, I always say there's a lot of ancillary benefits too. I tell my boys, you, you learn how to work with a team at a common goal, you leadership abilities. Tell me about some of the things you've learned maybe you didn't expect to learn being involved in pageants. Well, first of all, like I was saying with the girls, being around the people who are doing so much good in their community because all of these girls are from different counties. So my state was, or my county was Bardstown. Some of them were LaRue County. Some of them were Monticello. So they came from all over Kentucky doing different things in their certain communities. And when you're around those girls for so long, it makes you want to do more. Like I see these preliminary queens that want to compete in Miss Kentucky next year doing everything they can in their community to get to this level and it's inspiring to me too it makes me want to do more i want to go out and do what they're doing and invite invite them to what i'm doing and it's something really special like i said i never really had a big group of girlfriends so just learning that i i am enough to fit in with these girls and teaching them that they're enough to fit in with me and it's really special. I'm so glad I've learned it. <laughs> we talked about your passion for art, but you mentioned something yes. there about community service. Yes. So obviously you have a passion to give back. Yes, and, and now that, that's part of the criteria, but you seem to naturally have that in your DNA is like, I want to help. And yeah. certainly if it's real, it makes it a lot easier. So that's... tell me about some of the, maybe the philanthropic or community services yeah. that you're interested in. Well, my mother has her own professional face painting business, so that's where I gain most of my service hours. It's also kind of how I learned I could paint really quick, um, was through face painting. I've been doing it for probably 10 years, since I was about six years old is when she started it. So I just started learning right alongside with her. In these past few years, I've started doing events on my own. And I mean, we've probably painted over thousands of hours across Kentuckyana. You can see us at almost any event. You can hire us, but also we do do it for lots of community service. So just to put a smile on a kid's face. Yes, it's so, it's so special. Just last night I was at a foster care for foster children and foster parents event, giving them face paintings. And probably all of them really said that they'd never had a face painting before. And it's just when you show them the mirror and they look like a princess or a snowman, it's, it's amazing to see the smile on their face and how life-changing it is for them. Okay, so in a somewhat related topic, we mentioned face yes. painting here, so let's talk hair and makeup. Okay. <laughs> let's talk makeup, okay. <laughs> so you obviously, you're a naturally pretty girl. Thank you. And your parents must be very proud of you. But there is an art to that side as well. I mean, when you're in something that competitive, even a 1%, 2% difference yeah. is going to, is huge. So, so tell me a little bit about makeup and mm -hmm. where you learned that. I'm assuming your mom helped you. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I think of it the same way I think of a sport. You know, you, whenever you're going to state level or national level for your sport, you're buying the best supplies, you're paying for the best coaches, you're doing as much practice as you can. And I think of this the same way. I'm paying for the, well, I'm not paying because it's my mom, but <laughs> I have the best hair and makeup artist. I'm doing what I can to make sure I know how to do it myself because that's something really different about this system I've never experienced before is we're backstage by ourselves all day. So if we're not waking up at 4 a.m. to get our hair and makeup done, we're responsible for it ourselves backstage. And because my mom has her own makeup business, that's definitely something I have learned through her and perfected in my own way. Way. But I'm also taking cosmetology school at Campbellsville University right now. So I'm working on getting my license so I can one day do it for other people at pageants and weddings and photo shoots. And yeah, and, and for those who are watching rather than listening yes. this podcast, for those who are 
or using the mm -hmm. visuals. Hold, hold up your nails if you would. Okay. <laughs> do, yeah, just for a second. Let the can <laughs> hold on to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You gotta let the camera take a look at that. So, <laughs> so is this? Are you a, a nail technician as well? I mean, well, is that I'm part getting of it? yes. My license, my cosmetology license. I can do haircuts. I can do hair colors. I can do estheticians, nails, and makeup. Cosmetology is super well-rounded when it comes to the beauty services. You can also get individual license for specialties on nails or specialty on makeup or hair. But the thing about the cosmetology school is it's an all-over license to do pretty much anything. Okay, I, I want to hear about the judging of these contests because yes. obviously you're able to, as I said, you articulate a message very well, you're passionate. Yeah. Uh, so what is the breakdown as far as what's the criteria that judges looked for in Miss Kentucky's teen? It's a lot about service and representing the brand well. They want someone who knows enough about the brand to become an ambassador for it, which it's something that I really love doing. Right now, Miss America System has just partnered with the Red Heart Association, so go red for women, and we're really promoting women's fitness and heart health right now, because something we don't know a lot is that every two, or every one in two women get heart disease and that's not something that we've seen so commonly until now. So I think it's really important and what I love about it is my platform specifically, Art Spoken, it, there's been proven scientific that heart populations actually go down when looking at art or even doing art. So that's something I'm really excited to share with the judges at Nationals through interview. But they look for interview. There is a fitness competition where we get to wear Rebel Athletics, which is um, a sponsor for Miss America. And then there's gown competition and talent competition. Wow. You know, I think when anyone from Kentucky thinks about uh, beauty pageant winners, we think about Heather French Henry because yes. she was Miss American. We were so she very was. proud, as we're proud of you. Was, <laughs> was there anyone that you looked up to? Have you had conversations with her, or is there maybe someone else that you look up to for an entirely different reason? I definitely had have conversations with her. It's been an honor getting to meet her. She was at the competition when I won. We've done the count or the Kentucky State Fair together. She has her big veterans booth there, so I got to go alongside her and kind of walk through it and learn some about it more than I didn't know before. I actually, it's always been one of my favorite booths at the fair, and I had no idea it was hers, which was really really cool to figure out. But right now, my Miss Miss Kentucky, Mallory Hudson is a huge inspiration to me. She's so well articulated. She could speak to a wall for hours and sound beautiful. She's a huge inspiration to me. I just think she's a wonderful woman and I love getting to serve alongside her. Well, she'd be proud of you because you've been speaking to a wall here for a while. <laughs> You've done very well. You're killing <laughs> it. You're, you. you're knocking it out of the park. So you were in the position of looking up to Mallory, you mentioned Heather yes. French Henry. Now, now there are young girls who look up to you. Yeah. So, so how does that feel when a young girl comes up to you and they see you in the crown and they go, oh, you know, it's a real princess. Yes. What, what do you tell them? What advice do you give them? It's the sweetest ever. It's, it's definitely something I've just got to experience this year and it's something I really try to remember whenever doing events or practicing and it gets really hard is that this is my only year to do this. Like next year I'm not going to be Miss Kentucky's teen anymore so I really take full advantage of it this year. And when I see little girls or even little boys, children, one thing I really love to implement them in is self-love because for me, we are the generation that unfortunately lacks self-love. We're the first to praise independency and becoming your own strong boss person. But it's really easy to get lost in that and forget the things that we love about ourselves. And I think it's hard to spread love without being able to love yourself first. It's hard to really understand someone without understanding yourself first. So that's something I love to make sure I teach, especially to the young kiddos, that to love yourself no matter, no matter what's going on, where you are in life, that you too will pass. This moment will pass. You know, I don't want to be repetitive, but if there's anything that's interesting to parents, it is about passing that along, the belief in yourself. Yes. And gaining interest is all about things that are interesting. So I think there's a lot of parents that out there are watching you and go, she's obviously very confident. Mm -hmm. So how do you instill that in a child? In your opinion, was that something that was always there? I think these pageants, the experience yes. probably enhanced that and you were able to nurture that. But, but tell me, what would you tell someone who says, you know, I have a, a young daughter or a son mm -hmm. and they lack confidence. What would you tell them? I would tell them that it really all comes from learning who you are. Like I said, pageants are what did it for me, but getting down and dirty with yourself, figuring out what you're passionate about, what you want to advocate for, and who 
who you want to be, what you want to represent to the world, to the community. That's really where I find my confidence is knowing what I believe in, knowing what I'm appreciating, what appreciates me, and well representing that. Because when you're passionate about something, your fears, your passion will always overcome your fear, no matter what it is. And I truly believe that. So when you figure out what you're passionate about, what you advocate for, that, that will represent, that's a light that beams off of you without being able to help it. Your parents did a good job. You know that. <laughs> I'm impressed you. with you, but I'm impressed with your parents as well. <laughs> yes, they're amazing. So what's the next step for you, Sophia? Okay, so Miss Teen, and I want to make sure people know, I've, I said this correctly, this is Miss Kentucky's Teen. Yes. Sir. So you're like property of the state right now, <laughs> a, a proud that. product of the state. Yeah, and it's we're exporting you all over to counties yes. and other states. So yeah, so what's the next step for you? I have Miss America's Teen in January. It will be aired January 14th, I believe. Don't hold me to it. But it's definitely around the first week of January. It's, it's a job though, it's definitely a job and most people don't think of it that way. Especially, like there's county fairs, which are just usually for fun. Like I've been Miss Hardin County before and although I loved representing my hometown county, it was one of the most special things to me. This really is truly a job. I make appearances multiple times a week. Um, I do mock interviews multiple times a week, run-throughs multiple times a week, and same for Mallory, Miss Kentucky. She's on the go all the time, all the time. It's definitely a job that you want to represent and you want to do it well. So I'm really excited to take this to Miss America's team and represent my state there, and I really hope to do Kentucky Proud. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a great platform if you want to make a difference because Absolutely. you with one conversation with a little one can make a difference. It totally can. Yeah. Now, for me as an adult, you're a little bit intimidating because you are so <laughs> good at so many things. So tell me about Sophia's Thank weakness. You. Is there any weakness that you had and you said, okay, I need to work yes. on this? And how did you do that? Well, actually just last month I was in the hospital with a colon disease and you know, for the past few months before that, I think I'd been struggling with it since around August, but I honestly, I didn't know. I knew something was wrong with me and I'd been to the ER multiple times and they couldn't tell me what was wrong. They could never figure it out. And it really, it really frightened me. And there were moments where I was overwhelmed and I wanted to quit. I didn't want to do it anymore. But how I overcome that was just remembering like this is my moment. God put me in this time right now for a reason. This is my walk right now. Like it didn't just happen randomly. Like this was the path that God chose for me. They chose me for a reason. And really through that, I became super strong in my faith and remembering that this is my moment right now and I need to use it to the advantage that I can because it's not going to last forever. It's not going to be this next year. So I want to use it right now while I have yeah, it. Yeah, live in the moment, right? Exactly. I, I, okay, I'm curious about this one. Uh, someone like you that's very accomplished making all these appearances, people your age can be very judgmental. Is that fair to yes. say? Yeah, and, and to me, you know, you, we see the movie like Mean Girls and, yeah. and so <laughs> the, the jealousy factor comes up. What, have, what has your experience been? How do your friends react to your title and appearances and the attention that you're receiving? Well, my friends have been nothing but supportive. And I made that a goal, honestly, around the beginning of high school, my freshman year. When it was during COVID, I really took the time to understand like who stuck around in my life, who hasn't stuck around. And the group of friends that I've had my whole high school career has really been like my group of friends and there's nothing that we do but love and support each other everything we do everything they do i show up for everything i do they show up for one of my best friends bakari she is always backstage with me she is always carrying my dress bags for me and it's the sweetest like it really is a special friendship and they're not judgy or judgmental at all i wouldn't even say jealous even because it's something that i make sure they get to share with me although they're not in pageantry they're not in the beauty industry industry it might not be something they want to do and I don't pressure that on them but whenever there is an event that I think they would love to attend then I make it a point to invite them because I think it's special and it's an experience that not everyone gets. So for those out there and this can be people of your age or my age who yes. believe in the whole stereotype of you know pageant mm -hmm. girls they're they're you know really narcissistic they're, yeah. it's very superficial Obviously, that's not true. What would you yeah. say to them, though? Because I'm sure sometimes you get people yeah. who, are, who kind of look at you different and go, oh, she's yeah. that, and they judge you, yeah. right? Absolutely, but I would say don't underestimate pageant girls because <laughs> 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 although we do have the looks, and I mean, when it comes down to it, every
every single girl on stage is beautiful in their own way. They're all unique in their own way. So I would say it's not about finding what's unique about you even. It's about finding what you're passionate about and making sure you represent that well. Like I've said before, every girl is just beautiful and unique in their own way. So it's going to be hard to stand out in a looks wise or beauty wise, but it really is digging down deep and figuring out what you're passionate about. Every girl has their own passion that is super unique to them. And I think that's really special about pageants is that you figure out yourself and what you want to do with your life. I like Especially that. for teenagers, mm -hmm. you know. I started pageants when I was probably around 13 in the preteens. And it really forced me to get out of my shell and figure out who I am. And as a 13-year-old, that's probably something I never would have done. You know, even right now, like, what I want to do with my career pathway, what I want to represent to the community and the world, like, I wouldn't have half the reputation I have in Hardin County right now if it wasn't for this industry, if it wasn't for the passion that I've been spreading around the community. So, You know, on this podcast, Gaining yes. Interest, Legato Financial Group, thank you so much. Because mm -hmm. I think the theme of this has been, and I think it's got, it has great value, is believe in yourself. And that can apply Absolutely. to kids, adults, all of us. Believe in yourself. Bet on you. Know yes. that you're going to be confident. So what advice would you give? Maybe we have someone who's watching or listening right now, and they say, you know, I think my child has the right stuff. I think my daughter. And what, what would you tell them? What should they work on? What, what do they need yeah. to know? Well, absolutely. I think anybody has the right stuff. I don't think there's any wrong stuff per se. Good point. Good point. <laughs> I think really just figuring out, you know, who you are deep down, figuring out what you want to represent and who you are. I mean, that's a big step of it, of course, but also self-love, like I've said. I mean, it is inevitable to spread love without feeling love, and I absolutely believe that. Like I said, we're a generation that lacks self-love and really promotes independency and being strong. And that's amazing. Of course you want to yes. do that. But also you don't want to get lost in that and forget who you are. And it's really important, especially I think with the young kids, to figure out who you are. Push them, stress them to figure out who they are. It might be uncomfortable. It might not be a fun journey per se, but it's absolutely worth it because you come out on the other side knowing exactly what you do and who you want to be. And that's a life lesson that's hard to teach. So it's definitely something your kiddo has to figure out on their own. One thing I want to talk about before we leave, and thank you for your time. You've been very generous. <laughs> but I, I think being Miss Kentucky's teen, yes. it speaks to the love you have for this state. And I want to talk about that a little bit because I, I always say, you know, Louisville's a great place to raise adults. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what this state and representing Kentucky means to you. It does. What I love most about Kentucky is it's really the best of both worlds. We have a great city life, some of the biggest stadiums ever for sporting events. And of course, we have the Kentucky Derby. We have Lexington. We have the more country side of Kentucky, the more agriculture enriched side. And that's really what I love is you can come to Kentucky and you can become anything you want. You know, there's an opportunity for everyone everyone. You can do art in Kentucky and it get praised. You can race horses, you can do sports, you can be in an office. I mean there's so many opportunities in Kentucky and I think that's what I love most about it is that you really can be anything. It's a big, big dreamer state. Wow. You're a great ambassador for the state. Well thank you. And congratulations to you once again. Can I borrow the crown sometime? I might let you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, once again it is gaining interest powered by Legato Financial Group. We want to thank our guest very much. Sophia, thank you yes. once again. Thank you for and having me. Good luck to you moving forward. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, I'm excited for you. And we also are very thankful for you. Thank you for watching. Gaining interest, courtesy of Legato Financial Group. We'll see you next time.